Today I'm going to be proving that the square root of 2 is irrational, the same proof that got Hippasus thrown overboard by the Pythagoreans. Let's give it a go. So firstly, what do these numbers have in common? Now, if you said that you can write them as a fraction of whole numbers, then you would be correct. So we can write 3 as 3 divided by 1. We can write 0 0.6 as 6 divided by 10. Okay, so these numbers that you see on, on my screen here, they are all known as rational numbers. And the reason they're known as rational numbers is because you can write them as a ratio of integers. So 3 over 1, 6 over 10, for example, and that's where the name rational numbers comes from. So all of these numbers here are rational numbers, and that's because you can write them as a ratio. So these are obviously rational numbers, and it begs the question, well, can we have irrational numbers? And it turns out you can, and we can show it using a very simple example of Pythagoras' theorem. So let's consider a right-angled triangle because we need a right angle triangle in order to suit Pythagoras' theorem. So here we have a right angle triangle. Now, the very simplest form of a triangle you can think of when it comes to numbers is a unit. So we can have one. So let's think of a right angle triangle that has sides one. So this is one and this is one. Now this is obviously an isosceles triangle because both of these angles in here are the same, but we don't need to worry too much about that. So we have a right angle triangle here, and if you remember Pythagoras' theorem, it says that a squared plus b squared must equal c squared. So in our example we have 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared, where c is this length here, c squared. So we can rewrite that and say, well, therefore c squared equals 2. And by the same reasoning, if we take the square root of this, c must equal the square root of 2. Now, this in itself, the square root of 2, is an irrational number. And the story behind where irrational numbers comes from is quite a funny one, really. I mean, it's, it's funny, but it's also sad. Basically, the founding of irrational numbers is credited to Hippasus, who was a Greek philosopher, and he basically went to the Pythagoreans and said, here is a number that I think is irrational. Like, you can't write it as a ratio. And one of the stories has it, and this is one of my favourite stories to tell people because it's, it's got a bit of drama in there, although it's, it's quite sad, is that Hippasus himself went and said, here is my proof that root 2, this number that we've, we've got here, is irrational. We can't write it as a ratio. And the story has it that he was thrown overboard because of this blasphemy, because back then Pythagoreans believed that every single number could be written as a ratio, and anybody who disagreed with that was, yeah, it was, it was considered blasphemy, and so he was thrown overboard and sadly died. And that's kind of the, the story has it that way. There are other nicer versions. The story behind it's quite funny, really, because when you think about that the Pythagoreans were so strong-willed that every number was a, a rational number, and the most simple case of Pythagoras' theorem gives you an irrational number. Yeah, it's kind of ironic, really, but the story the story is, is quite a fun one to tell. Now, I'm going to be showing you the proof of the square root of 2 being irrational, but first we're going to have to lay down some basics just so we can use them in the proof itself. Before I dive into the proof, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Brilliant.org. Now, if you are interested in the story of Hippasus being thrown overboard for finding out that the square root of 2 was irrational, then you will love Brilliant's course on math history. It dives into some history behind mathematics and tells you about the development of maths over centuries. It was honestly an incredible course and I was fortunate enough to learn some new things that I put in today's video, particularly about Hippasus. It doesn't matter where you are in your mathematics ability or in your STEM ability, there are a variety of different courses that suit different ages, different levels of knowledge, and they are all incredibly engaging. Now Brilliant have kindly given you watching this video and all my subscribers free access to Brilliant's platform for a full 30 days for free, and the first 200 of you that click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video and sponsoring my channel, let's get back to it. The first thing that we need is, and I'll just call this number one, and we're gonna say, what are even and odd numbers. Now, have a think about this yourself. You might think, well, typically when I think of an even number, I think of 
if you, you can divide it by two, an odd number you can't. And you'd be right in saying that, and there's quite a nice way we can write that. So if I just say here, say an even number can be divided by two. Okay, so we can say, that some mathematical notation for this is saying an even number is a number that is two multiplied by any other number, so we'll call that k, where k is an integer. Okay, and that's one, two, three, four, five, uh, and so on. Um, and the negatives as well. And the reasoning for why it's 2 multiplied by k is because if we take, say, let's say 10, we know that that's an even number, because if you divide it by 2, we get that that's, e that's equal to 5. But you can also say, well, that means that 10 must equal, if we multiply the 2 times 5, so multiply the 2 upwards, we get 2 times 5. So we can write the 2 here, and this can be seen as the number k. Okay, so that's the reasoning behind why we have an even number is given by 2k. Now the even numbers are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on, and the odd numbers are the numbers in between. So all you really need to do is take an even number, add 1 to it, and we get an odd number. So the notation for that is an odd number is 2k plus 1. And again, we also have where k is an integer, so I'll just copy that and have that again here. Okay, so I'll just highlight that. We'll do it in red. And this is going to be condition number one. So even and odd numbers. And we're going to need that in the proof of root two being irrational. Now, the second thing we're going to look at is when you square even and odd numbers. So we're going to say square, or I'll say squaring, even and odd numbers. We'll highlight that. So we're going to need this again in the proof. Um, and squaring is quite simple, really. All we're going to do is we're just going to take what it means to be an even number and what it means to be an odd number and square them. So, OK, let's say we're going to square an even. So, so we'll do even squared. And we're going to say, well, that's that must be 2k all squared. And that must be 2k multiplied by 2k. And we can rewrite this and say, well, that's 2, open bracket, k multiplied by 2k. This number in here is just an integer. And we have a 2 out front. And where did we see that a 2 out front appears? It appears here for an even number. So therefore, we can say an even squared is even. Now, if we do the same for an odd squared, we get 2k plus 1 squared. And if we multiply out the brackets, so we expand this, so we've got 2k plus 1 multiplied by 2k plus 1. And if you remember anything from expanding out brackets, what we get is we get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And the reason for that is what we've done is we've got the 4k squared here, and that's because we've done 2k multiplied by 2k. We get the 4k here, and that comes from 1 multiplied by 2k, 2k multiplied by 1, 2k plus 2k is 4k, and then we've got the 1 here, and that comes from the 1 multiplied by the 1. So it's just about multiplying each of the numbers in here. Okay. Now we can rewrite this and say, well, this is the same as, we'll pull a 2 out front, so that's the same as 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. And again, this here is an integer. This is 2. So this part here is even. We're adding 1 on it. Where have we seen that before? Here, when a number is odd. So we can say that squaring an odd number gives you an odd number back. Perfect. So I'll just write that here. We'll say even squared is even, odd squared is odd. Now obviously this notation is, is not correct mathematical notation really, but because you might take even as the variable, but 
anyway this is the gist of it so that's going to be number two okay now the third thing we're going to need is squaring a fraction or a ratio should i say and this in itself all it is is saying well a divided by b all squared is the same as a squared over b squared and we can see that because we have if we do a divided by b multiplied by a divided by b and when you multiply fractions what you end up with is the multiplication of the two numbers on top so we have a squared and then the multiplication of the two numbers underneath which is b squared and indeed we get a squared divided by b squared here okay so that is going to be condition three now the very final thing we're going to need for the proof is what is known as a fraction in lowest terms so let's say we have some random fraction we'll call it 8 divided by 10 now what we can do with this is we can look at each of the numbers and break it down into its components and it's known as prime factorization so what all that means is we can look at the number 8 and say well okay how do we get how do we get 8 what numbers do we have to multiply together to get 8 so we'll have 1 now you could say 1 multiplied by 8 but because 8 itself can be divided by 2 we can say okay well it's 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 again multiplied by 2 okay now we can do the same with the bottom and we can say oh well 10 that's 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 and what you'll notice is there's a number that appears in both the top and the bottom of the fraction or the numerator and denominator and that is 2 so we have 2 here and 2 here and because they both appear what happens is they essentially cancel out so this cancels out with this and we end up with 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 divided by 1 multiplied by 5 now obviously there are no numbers in either the top or the bottom that are the same again so there we have the fraction in its lowest terms now we can obviously write this in a nicer format instead of having the multiplication we can say well this is just the same as 4 divided by 5 and this is this fraction in lowest terms and that's what it means by a fraction being in lowest terms and a formal definition of this is basically saying that a fraction in lowest terms is p divided by q so it's some fraction some some number so p is some number q is some number or divided by each other if p and q don't share any factors other than one now i should have mentioned that actually because when we were talking about this here i said oh, there are no numbers that are the same here but I, that was a lie we did have one and one which we could have cancelled out but that would have just left us with the same value basically so this is the definition for a fraction in lowest terms and that's going to come at the very last step of this proof. So now that we've gone through four main things that we're going to need for this proof, we're going to jump straight into it. So we're going to use proof by contradiction and this is a very common proof method in mathematics and all we're going to do is we're going to say okay the square root of 2 is rational and then we're going to contradict it and by that contradiction we can therefore say well it's actually not rational, it's irrational. So we'll start by saying that the square root of 2 is a rational number and if you remember anything from what I said at the start of the video, a rational number can be written, written as p divided by q. So what we'll start by saying is, first assume that the square root of 2 is rational, i.e. we can write that the square root of 2 equals p divided by q, and we're going to say this is in its lowest terms and lowest terms is what i mentioned up here okay so what we what can we do with this we can square it so if we square we'll get so if i do a little notation there to say we're going to square 
then 2, the square root of 2 squared is going to be 2, and we're going to have p divided by q, and that's all going to be squared. Now, if we remember from 3, we can rewrite that and say that that equals p squared divided by q squared, and I'm just going to say by 3, okay? Now, what we have is 2 equals p squared divided by q squared. We can rearrange, so I'll just put rearrange, and we have that 2q squared equals p squared, and all I've done there is I've just taken this q squared that's on the bottom of the fraction and multiplied it up. So we've got multiplied by q squared there, and that's what we have here, and then we have the p squared as normal, so we have that here. Okay, so we've we rearranged this. Now, we have a 2 here, you might be thinking, we've seen this somewhere before, and you'd be right in saying that, because we've actually seen by number 1, which is this here, that 2 multiplied by an integer is an even number. So, what we found is 2 multiplied by an integer, because this whole thing here is an integer, so this therefore must be even, so we can say from this, so if I say by 1, we have that p squared is even. And then by 2, which was this, saying an even squared is even, we can therefore say, well, that means that p is even. So and by 2, p is even. So I'll say we have found, or we have deduced, p is even. Now, if p is even, we can rewrite that in the format that we have here. So we can say, okay, well, p can be written as 2 multiplied by k. So let's write that. So we've deduced that p is even. So we'll say p equals 2k. And that's just, yeah, proven that it's, it's even. So if we substitute p equals 2k back into here, then what we find, so if I say substituting, we find that 2q squared must equal p squared, which is now 2k squared, so this must equal 4k squared. Now we can set, so I'll just say that's implies that 2q squared equals 4k squared. Now what we can do from this is divide by 2, and we get q squared equals 2k squared. But by what we've just done before, we know that a integer multiplied by 2 is an even number. So we can say, same as what we said before, we can say by 1, q squared is even, and then by 2, q must be even. So from this, we can say therefore, q is even. So both p and q are even, but we know that this fraction that we had, which was p over q, we know at the start of the proof we said, well, this is in lowest terms. p over q is in its lowest terms, which means they can't be even, because an even number both share a common multiplication, and that is 2. So what we can say is, but this means they both have a common factor of 2. And we can see that by, the, by number 1, the formula number 1, and that is that even numbers are 2 multiplied by some integer. So they have a common factor of 2, so therefore, so therefore, contradicts p over q being in lowest terms. So we can say contradiction, 
Therefore, the square root of 2 is irrational. And there we have it, a really, really nice proof of why the square root of 2 is irrational. And thankfully, we are not getting thrown overseas for proving this. I hope you liked the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you all in the next one.